Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. This is Victor Yoganero and I'm a product designer. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to design this amazing floating action button right here. This is done on Figma. If you're new to my channel, I'm sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified of future videos. And um, I'm going to be putting timestamps in the video description. This is a very short tutorial, but the design section of these buttons, you see these buttons right here. The design section actually took some time. So if you already know how to design this, I don't want to learn how to design this. You can just click on the timestamp to jump to the section that you want. But if you want to learn everything from, from the beginning, uh, you can just watch it like so. So without further delay, let's get started. But um, on the end of the tutorial, you see that I set this parent button right here to 45 degrees. You can set it to 135 degrees to actually achieve this effect. So let's get started, guys. Hi guys and welcome back to another design class. Today we're going to be creating an amazing floating action button. So without further delays, let's get started. Um, so the first thing we'll do is to take an ellipse tool, hold shift key to make sure it's a perfect shape and um, let's fill it with uh, blue. This is a personal preference. You can fill it with any color of your choice, green, black, purple, whichever color you fancy. And um, let's take, um, let's import a plus sign. So let's go to plugins, feather icons, and get it. I'm looking for a plus sign right now. Okay, see it right here. So I'll import that plus sign, and I'm just going to group this and take it outside of the frame and delete this empty frame delete the empty frame and um, i'm just going to move this in here and i'm going to scale it up to make it bigger excellent and uh, i'm going to align it to the center and change the stroke color from, from black to white so they will have a floating action button and we have to reduce this to three okay looks good but i think i can make this smaller so let's make this smaller like so all right so I'm just going to take another ellipse tool for the content of the floating action button. So I'll hold shift and but this circle will be smaller than the floating action button itself. We're not going to make it the same width or even bigger than the floating action button. It has to be smaller. So let me make this a bit bigger like so. And I'm going to fill it with almost black. So let's go import some icons that will need. The content of this icon is dependent on the kind of app that you are building. So it's not always the same thing. If you, if you notice, the floating action button for WhatsApp is different from the floating action button for Twitter. So it depends on the app that you are building. All right, so let's import some uh, icons here. Let's get Facebook. Import. Let's get uh, LinkedIn. Import. Where's the import button? Import. Let's get Twitter. Um, import. Let's get. Uh, what else do we need? Go to Twitter. Go to Facebook. Go to LinkedIn. What else do we need? Let's get Instagram. Let's import Instagram. Import. And uh, let's import one last one. Let's import on. Um, okay, you told me now what do we need. Okay, let's just use this one. Like I said, the content doesn't really matter. The whole idea is to teach you how to do this so you can design it and customize it to suit whatever app that you're building. All right, we have all our contents, but as you can see, they are unusually big. So you're going to have to resize this. So I'll highlight everything like so. Hit the K key on my keyboard and scale it way down. This way, 
undo that. Let's scale this down, 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 down. Bring it this way. Undo this. I'm going to move everything outside of the frames because it's disturbing the alignment. So I'm just going to move everything out. Alright, everything's out. So I'm going to delete the empty frames. We don't need them. Okay, so let's highlight everything again and scale down. Bring it closer over here and zoom in. Okay, I believe they are still too big, so I'll scale them down further, like so. Alright, so for Facebook, I'll take it and put it in here, properly aligned. I'll change the fill color to white and um, bring it to the front perfect and then uh, the next thing i'll do is to duplicate this i'll group this and duplicate it i'll just move this upwards and then i'll change the content to linkedin so i'll delete this facebook right here and i'll uh, put linkedin in here bring it to the front and change the fill color to white and then the next thing i'll do move it inside this group the next thing i'll do i'll highlight this and um, i'll just hold my alt key and drag it to duplicate then I'll just Ctrl D, Ctrl D. I think that's everything, alright? Okay. So um, I'll change this one from LinkedIn to Twitter. Ensure you use the guidelines to make sure you are aligning everything to the center. Change the color to white. Perfect. And. Uh, Go for I'm going to move it in here and then um I'll go on to the next item which is Instagram so I'll bring it in here and uh I'll delete this LinkedIn here and move Instagram in here okay to the center bring it to the front this is not exactly center right and what kind of center is that all right and then i'll change the fill color to white create a good contrast and uh, i'll move it inside the group and the last one which is vimeo i think i'm not sure so i'll delete the linkedin of course and move the vimeo inside move it inside bring it to the front and uh, of course change the fill color to white and uh, move it inside this group so let's check if it's properly aligned to the center i don't know okay it's perfectly aligned all right so we have the contents of our floating action button right here so um what i'll do next is i'll highlight everything like this and reduce the spacing between items to 12. okay and i'll move it closer to the default floating action button and um i will name everything properly so this is vimeo this is instagram always name your elements properly so it doesn't confuse you later this is twitter this is linkedin this is facebook and uh, this one, I'm going to group these two together. 
going to group these two sorry I'm going to group these two and uh, name it FAB which is floating action button all right so now that we have this I'll highlight everything here and add it to layouts make sure it's aligned to the center everything and uh, that to layout and FAB. I'll add another auto layout. I'll line to the center, of course. All right. So now that everything is perfectly aligned to the center, I'm. Um, what I'll do is to remove the auto layout from here because don't need it anymore. It's not aligned to the center, so you don't really need it anymore. And uh, this FAB. I'm going to move it. Let's collapse this to create a better working space. So this FAB, I'm going to move it inside this frame. I also remove auto layer from everything here. I remove auto layer from everything here. So all these icons i'll highlight everything and move them inside the parent frame and then delete this frame i don't need it anymore so we have one frame now we have one frame containing everything so what we'll do is hold our alt key and duplicate this make sure it's perfectly aligned like this all right perfectly aligned and um I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to rotate this by let's say 90 degrees. Okay, high about 45. Okay, like this. I'm going to rotate it like this to create a form of difference because this is going to be the open state and this is going to be the closed state. So um, everything here now, I'm going to name this default. And I'm going to name this open. All right. So this default states. I'm going to go. I'm going to highlight all the social media icons, and I'm going to align them to the center. And I will hide them behind the floating action button. We don't want to see them in the default states. So I'll hide them behind the floating action button right here, like this. And I will highlight both states like this and um, create a component set all right so we have our component set so what i want to do now we're going to let's rename the components to fav floating action button the so next we'll do let's head to prototype and uh, we're going to add interaction to this so on this one right here we're going to go to the fab right here and we're going to say on click go to the open state on click change to open and the animation is going to be smart animate and it's going to be ease out and then um, we'll head to the open state and we'll locate the floating action button which is this one right here and we are going to bring it back here and the animation is going to be on click change to blah 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 smart animates so we have a uh, we have our floating action button but like you know we can't it won't really work like this now so we we'll need to create a frame that we we'll use to test it so let's just go ahead and um let's create a frame let's create a frame so let's um take a uh, 100 large and uh let's say home so this is going to be our phone on which we'll be using let's add that this is your whatsapp right now so we are going to get an instance of this we're going to get an instance by holding alt and dragging it in here so we'll get the instance of the floating action button so we'll just put it at the side right here and that's where the floating action button usually is so we have it we have our instance we have our uh, components it's time to test it to see if this actually works. So we'll click on the frame and I'll click on present. Okay, so this is it. Let's um let's go to the options and uh, let's change the settings. 
prototype um, design show prototype settings device now I knew it I knew it Android Live alright so let's see what we have here okay I knew something was wrong somewhere alright so um, let's see let's test it haha -ha. it works seamlessly you see that so in case you're working on a project and you, are, you need a floating action button this is how you create it and you can see that the icons are unusually big kind of floating action buttons are not supposed to be this big but that's a very basic problem you can just resize it click on it and resize everything and it's very small so there you have it that's how you create a floating action button in case you're new to my channel make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell because i'm creating new contents and uploading very soon so you don't want to miss out on it and um, for the returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. See you guys next time.